Good morning. Welcome to 11 o'clock worship here. It's great to have you in God's house this morning. I'd like to ask you to look in your bulletin for a few announcements. You'll find different activities in the life of the church, and we hope you'll come be a part of those. Also, I hope you'll take a moment and register attendance on the Ritual of Friendship page. You'll find that at the end of the pew. In communion today, which is going to be served by the method known as intinction, you're going to be invited to come to either the station down here, the two stations at the back, or the station off the balcony. We do have a gluten-free wafer at this station here and the station in the balcony. So if you need gluten-free bread in order to take communion today, please come to this station or that station. If you would like communion but do not want to come to the stations or can't, just stay in your place and after we've served people at the stations, we'll come through the sanctuary. would love to serve you. This is a Three Cents a Meal Sunday and I have passed some baskets around to a few folks. So let us now continue our worship as we present our Three Cents a Meal hunger offering. Set apart than any other man. 
good morning. Good morning. Will you please join me in the call to worship? We are the body of Christ. Individually, we are members of the church. As Christ's church today, let us join together as we worship God. And now let us stand and sing together hymn 626, As the Deer. Please stand with me. Water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength and shield. To you alone may my spirit There are days when even our best intentions go awry, when we are not at one with God's purposes. And yet, our gracious Lord journeys with us and provides for us unending mercy, patience, and kindness, so that when we repent, we find ourselves forgiven. This morning, let us confess together our sins to God, praying the prayer printed in the bulletin this morning. Will you pray with me? Wonderful God, your son called disciples and prayed for their unity. Forgive the divisions that we create and foster among your children. Help us to confess our lack of charity toward people who look, speak, or behave in ways that we consider different. Forgive an arrogance that pretends we have an exclusive claim on the truth, thus keeping us from listening or learning new ways. Remind us of how graciously you have welcomed us into your family and help us to show the love of Christ in our attitudes and actions as we too walk the path of discipleship following the Lord and Savior, in whose name we pray. Gracious Lord, we do indeed pray for unity. We pray for mercy. In Christ's powerful name, we pray. Amen. Be at peace. Our Lord has given us rest. Our master's touch has healed us. And his blood has been shed for our salvation. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
we are forgiven. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be. Please be seated. Today we are celebrating both sacraments in the church. Later we'll come to the table. And now Emily and Shad Skinner are bringing their son Miles for the sacrament of baptism. I'll ask them to come forward at this time. We've got a couple of grandparents coming down and one of those is going to be our elder to assist. Emily is going to be returning to her work in nursing in Gainesville on weekends starting next week. And Shad is going to be deployed again to Germany fairly soon. So we, a lot of times I've said I wanted to wait till kids were six months old to baptize them. Since I've had a little practice with younger ones, they're going to let me have that opportunity today. Friends, listen to God's word as it comes to us in the gospel according to Mark. They were bringing little children to Jesus so that Jesus might touch them. The disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Then he said, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child shall not enter it. And he did take the children in his arms and he blessed them and he laid his hands upon them. Dearly beloved, the sacrament of baptism is a sacrament of grace and the word of God made visible as ordained by our Lord Jesus Christ. It's to be understood as a sign of God's power and mercy in cleansing us of our sins and as the means whereby we are identified with Christ and brought into Christ's body, which is the church. Baptism also represents the outpouring of the Holy Spirit into the lives of believers. The baptism of children and infants has particular significance for it reminds us that this is a sacrament of grace and love. It illustrates that long before we are conscious of God, God calls us and claims us and God calls us God's own children. In this sacrament, we publicly declare that this child has been claimed by God and engrafted into the body of Christ, the church. You see, our children also belong to the household and the family of God. Likewise, when we baptize a child or infant, we are reminded that our journey in faith is a lifelong journey, that we are accepted by God where we are, and that we mature in faith as we grow. In baptism, the parents will be asked to promise to bring their child up to love and serve God. You, the members of this church family, their family and friends, will be asked also to pledge your part in helping to raise this child to know God. Shad and Emily, I ask you now, is Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior? Do you trust in him? Do you intend your son to be his disciple, to obey his word, to show his love? Let us bow before God in prayer. Most merciful and loving Father, we thank you for the church of your dear son, for the ministry of the word, and for the sacraments of grace. We praise you that you've given us gracious promises concerning our children, and then in your mercy you call them to you, marking them with this sacrament as a singular token and pledge of your love. Set apart now this water from a common to a sacred use, and grant that what we do here on earth may be confirmed in heaven. In humble faith we now present you this child. We ask you to receive him as your own, to fill him with your Holy Spirit, and to keep him forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. I ask you now, what is the Christian name of your son? Miles Merlin. Miles Merlin Skinner, child of the covenant. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God's Spirit dwell in you richly from this time forth and forevermore.
Friends, this child has now been received into Christ church. Do you, the members of this congregation, friends and family, on behalf of the whole church of Jesus Christ, pledge to undertake with these parents the Christian nurture of their child, so that in due time, Miles himself may confess his faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? And will you endeavor, by your example and fellowship, to strengthen his family ties with the household and family of God? If so, will you answer? We do. Chad and Emily, I have a couple things to present to you today. I have a certificate of baptism here, which marks what we did here today. Now, the difficult thing is there are two witness lines and three significant witnesses here. <laughs> so you get to pick later who's going to witness this. Then also, I have a cradle cross for you. Now, there's a very good chance that your dad may have bought this cross in Honduras because when we go to Honduras now... On our last day in country, we go to an artisan village. You'll remember the Valley of Angels. And I Xerox this cross so that we know the size. And the mission team is charged to scour the entire village and buy every cradle cross they can find. So this one does come from our mission team. You know what that experience is all about. And you know that this cross spells out Jesus so in time, when Miles asks, what is this cross about? You tell him that all of us here together have pledged with our words and our actions to help him to know the Lord and Savior Jesus that we love. And, oh, we're happy now. You did a perfect job getting us right where we need to be. Yeah. Friends, it is an honor and a pleasure to introduce to you the newest member of the Church of Jesus Christ. This is Miles Merlin Skinner. Child of the Covenant. He is tiny, but he is inquisitive. Now, he is one of the grandchildren of the congregation, so he'll be making visits down from Gainesville. And whenever he is here, he will do just what he's doing now. He'll watch you and he'll study you. He'll try to figure out where that voice is coming from. <laughs> And what you're going to do in your life is you're simply going to show him what it means to love and to serve Jesus. As I've told you before, our God is an amazing God. When God decided to get our allegiance and our attention, rather than coming as a great king and demanding it, God came in the person of Jesus as a helpless child and captured our hearts. Miles, this is a part of your extended family. This is the household and the family of God, and they are the people who love you and want you to know of God's love every day. You have a full belly, and you are in a perfect position now to enjoy this time. So, Shad, thank you so much. To a trick question posed to Jesus, Jesus responded, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. Inasmuch as our coins and currency are engraved or imprinted with the words, In God we trust, we might say that all of our money rightly belongs to God. But God has asked for only a tenth and any other offerings we may choose to give. For example, what we've already given this morning for our three cents a meal hunger offering. Let us now present God's tithe and any other offering.
Let us pray. Blessed Lord, we thank you that we know ourselves to be richly blessed. We also know you love cheerful givers. It is with joy and gratitude that we offer these gifts. Use them and employ us for your service. We are confident that what we place in your hands will accomplish much more than we could ever imagine, thus giving us another gift for which to give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. This time I'd like to invite any children who are with us to join me down front for our time with younger disciples. Jesus loves me, this I know. Good morning. Now, Winston, I know you have a lot of books at home, but I bet this is one you don't have yet, because this one just came out a couple of months ago. So, Winston, I want to tell you and all these other children of God a story today, and it's called Teddy, the remarkable tale of a president, a cartoonist, a toy maker, and a bear. When we open it up, it says Theodore Roosevelt, or TR as he was known to his friends, was President of the United States. When he wasn't busy running the country, guess what he did? He rode horses, he wrestled, he read, he lifted weights, he wrote books, he sailed, he played football, he gave speeches, he camped, and he hunted, but not all at the same time. One time, as president, he went to the state of Mississippi. And in addition to negotiating contracts and treaties, he also went hunting. His hosts, who had brought him to Mississippi, thought that he might bag a bear or two. But word must have gotten out that T.R. was coming because there wasn't a bear to be found. Now, last Winston, but also, okay, yes. and everybody in the front row, do you see a bird in there? Look on top of T.R.'s head. Do you see a bunny? And do you see a bear in there? Oh, it said there wasn't a bear to be found, except that there was. A tiny, no-account, scruffy cub. Me, shoot that little fellow, said the president. Well, if I so much as ruffled his fur, I'd never be able to look my children in the eyes again. So he put away his gun, and he returned to Washington and his home in the White House, and that was the end of that, except that it wasn't. In another part of Washington, at a very busy newspaper, there was the cartoonist, the man who drew all the pictures, and his editor came and said to him, Clifford Berryman, I want something different, something that touches the heart, something that speaks to everyone. I want that cartoon on my desk tomorrow morning without fail. Clifford said, yes, sir, without fail tomorrow morning. But there was a problem. Clifford didn't know what to draw about. It was just then that Harry, the boy who brought the coffee, said, hey, I was just in the newsroom and over the wire I heard a story of President Teddy Roosevelt not shooting a little bear. That's a great idea. And look, Winston, he drew a picture. And there's the president, and there's the bear, and he worked all night long, and in the morning he brought his cartoon. Excellent, said the editor. You sure do know how to draw bears. Yes, sirree, 
That's one cuddly bear cub, all right. And that cartoon went out in newspapers all over the country, including New York City, where Mrs. And Mr. and Mrs. Mitchum had a little shop, and they sold newspapers, and they sold candy, and sometimes they sold animals or stuffed animals and toys that Mrs. Mitchum made. Rosie, Rosie, take a look at this. The President of the United States refusing to shoot a little bear. Can you bear that? <laughs> he should be so lucky, Morris. Not everyone gets to meet the President. But such a great President, too, said Morris. In fact, we need to let everyone know what a big warm heart he has. Without saying a word, Mrs. Mitchcomb got out some cloth and she cut out a bear. And it had a pointed snout and little round ears and arms and legs. And then she stitched that bear together. Now she didn't know what to use for his eyes. And her husband said, how about the buttons on my shoes, which she used. And then he stitched a she stitched a little teeny snout on there. When she looked at it for inspection, Mr. Mitchcomb was delighted. He said, let's put that bear in the shop window and let everybody know the story of Teddy's bear. Now, it says, Teddy's bear is portrayed by the famous artist, Mr. Clifton Berryman. But then, they said, perhaps we'd better get permission to use the president's name. After all, Teddy Roosevelt is our president. So Mr. Mitchcomb wrote a letter and sent it to Washington, D.C. When the president received it, he stopped whatever he was doing at the moment, which was very important, and he sent off a reply. Dear Mr. Mitchcomb, while I don't expect my name will do much good selling bears, you are welcome to use it as you have indicated. It is a bully idea. Sincerely, Ted Theodore Roosevelt. Mr. Mitchcomb said, only in America and on White House stationery. So, then they started making teddy bears. And they made teddy bears of all kinds. It says here that they made cowboy teddy bears and bellhop teddy bears and train conductor teddy bears. They made Boy Scout teddy bears and hospital patient teddy bears and chefs. They made teddy bears out of burlap and calico and velvet and flannel and mohair and wool and there were brown teddy bears and black teddy bears. There were auburn teddy bears and white teddy bears and even, here in the corner, a red teddy bear that was made by request of a Russian Grand Duke for his daughter, Princess Xenia. To go with all the teddy bears, there were teddy bear wardrobes and teddy bear steamer trunks and tea sets and books. The world was filling up with teddy bears. Mr. and Mrs. Mitchcomb had to close their shop and open a factory. And they started making teddy bears around the clock. It was called the Ideal Novelty and Toy Company. And they made teddy bears of every size and description. Hundreds of teddy bears, thousands of teddy bears, millions of teddy bears. Yet as different as all the bears were, because every one was supposed to be exactly the same, they had one thing in common. You know, Rosie said, Mr. Mitchcomb, I think the reason kids love teddy bears so much is they're so darn cuddly. That is a soft bear. Oh, my dear, Mrs. Mitchcomb said, it's because teddy bears give cuddles in return. And there wasn't anyone anywhere who could possibly disagree, not even, and Winston, look right here at the picture. See that big man in the bed? What's he hugging? His bear. Not even the president. Now, that's the story of a president 
a cartoonist, a toy maker, and a bear. Now, did you know that's a teddy bear? Do you have a teddy bear at home? I bet you do. And you've got a puppy. Did you bring the puppy from home or did that come from the library? Okay, came from home. And Winston's already discovered that lots of Sadie and Bethany Owens toys live in the library. And so they can be borrowed and hugged during church too. But Winston and Miles each have their bear today. And I hope that they'll cuddle it and snuggle it and get the cuddles in return. So let's fold our hands. Can we do that? And bow our heads and let's talk to God in prayer. God, thank you for cuddles and snuggles and love that come to us from friends and family and even bears. Thank you for how we've been able to share that love with people out of our church and bless us as we continue to do that. Watch us, we ask, and help us to share your love in Jesus' name. Amen. Winston, thank you for coming down and... Do you want the brown bear or the golden bear? Which one? Oh, and he wants his puppy too. This is Churchill. Churchill, that's a wonderful <laughs> puppy. And thanks for coming down. Let us now offer our prayers as a people. Our God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home, we praise you. Those words cause us to reflect on time and generations. We are reminded of our youth when we first learned about you and the world in which we live. Every day was an adventure. We think of the good times we enjoyed, maturing, being given more freedoms as we demonstrated we could handle it, and taking on more responsibilities. We thank you for those years which have often been called the best years of our lives. Then we consider our young adult years as we married and became parents. We thank you for work that provided, proved to be, excuse me, we thank you for work that proved to be rewarding and satisfying while enabling us to provide for our families. It was while parenting that we learned why our parents were so concerned about us, why they were so cautious and imposed the rules that they did. They were protective and wanted only the best for us, their children. We thank you for the traditions that were established and are being passed on to the children the next generation. We then think of the adult years when parents get to do things they sacrificed years earlier when their children were young. They enter the retirement years finding time to pursue new interests, to travel, to volunteer, and to enjoy grandparenting. We are grateful for these stages of life, for the wisdom we gain along the way, and for the pride we feel in what we have accomplished and for time to reflect on your goodness to us throughout our lives. We praise and thank you, O Lord. Constant companion, we thank you that our high school youth group has returned safely from being at Montreat for a wonderful week. While rain at that setting as well as at the beach can dampen spirits, we can praise you in spite of the weather, for we know rain and sunshine are numbered among your good gifts and we need them both. We now lift up to you our prayers for our middle school youth group and their chaperones as they will be traveling to Ocala later this week. Grant them your travel mercies and watch over them in all of their recreation and other activities. God of great compassion, while it has been over a week since Barry forged a destructive path through the Gulf states northward, we realize that the people there are still in need of assistance and supplies to help them as well as the Californians shaken by the earthquake. We know they need this assistance and supplies to recover. 
So we ask you to speed human and material resources their way immediately. Loving Father, we pray for children who grew up in dysfunctional families where one or both parents were abusive and where this demeanor was made worse by alcoholism. Shelter the young, innocent, and very vulnerable. Guide the parents to counselors or group therapy sessions where they will get the help they need. Guard young children from being so scarred by human fathers that they have difficulty relating to you as our Heavenly Father. Holy Comforter, we commend to your loving care those who mourn the loss of a loved one, who see the empty chair, who call out their loved one's name, and who long to feel his or her touch. Reassure them that you are with them and grant unto them your precious gifts of hope and peace. O great physician, hear our prayers for the men and women you have called to practice the medical arts and so to be instruments of your healing. For those in pain, we ask for comfort. For those who are weak, we pray for strength. For those struggling with therapies and treatments, we pray for courage and perseverance. For those facing surgery, we pray that their faith will steady them. O supplier of living water, we pray for vacationers as they refresh themselves by lying on the beach, by hiking in the mountains, by visiting historic sites, by enjoying amusement or water parks, by attending concerts, by spending time with family or friends who live far away, by reading or going to movies, and by engaging in many different activities. Grant that these pursuits may energize and refresh them after having had time for rest and renewal. Almighty God, we pray for peace in the Middle East and we pray that the world leaders would work toward that end. Lord God, hear our prayers for our nation, for our president, for the members of the House and the Senate and the justices of the Supreme Court, that they will do what is right for our people and which shows concern for our neighbors in the world as well. Help of the helpless, we pray for our military personnel who go where they are sent and who do what they are ordered. Bless and keep them. We also pray for first responders as they answer their calls to protect, to rescue, and to stabilize the injured or stricken. As they hurry to answer calls, shield them from danger on the roads and at the sites. All these prayers and the silent ones of our hearts we lift up to you and together we pray as Jesus taught, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our scripture lesson for today comes to us in the letter known as 1 Corinthians, chapter 12. I'll be reading today from the New Revised Standard Version. Listen now for God's word as it begins in verse 12. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and were all made to drink of the one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. Continuing in verse 25. There may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of that body. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Let me tell you the story of some cuddly bears. Dear First Presbyterian Church Prayer Bear Parents, my name is Connie Flanagan, and I'm a recipient of one of your prayer bears. 
I could not be more thankful for my new prayer friend. Marilee Weeks sent it to me. She is a friend of my sister that lives in Winter Haven. I'm so grateful to have my new friend that knows and loves God and has been loved by so many people. I promise to care for and love my bear, and of course, we will pray together. Thank you again for being so thoughtful and supportive. I just wanted you to know that I'm doing well with my breast cancer treatment. Also, I would like you to know that I'm doing well because of all the prayers that are being said for me. I have no doubt about it. So again, I thank you for your prayers. Connie Flanagan. Dear Marilyn, thank you so, so much for thinking of me. My new bear sits with me during the day, and when I get feeling down, I read the prayer. Your note also was so uplifting, and I appreciate it so much. It gives me hope. I am taking it one day at a time. Believe me, God is helping me through this. Thank you again for the wonderful surprise in your prayers. Love, Annette. Dear Pastor Negley, during a recent visit from New Jersey, we attended a Sunday service with my brother Dave and his wife Penny. We took home one of your teddy bears to give someone who really needs prayers, hope, and love. Malcolm is a sweet 20-year-old custodian at my school who was paralyzed from the neck down in a head-on collision last summer. I know the teddy bear will touch his heart and mean a lot to him. Please keep him in your prayers. Thank you so much for all your church's good works. God bless you. Sincerely, Sandy Severance. This one came with a note attached to it. The explanation says Wanda Knott is Tom Kaufman's 91-year-old sister. She lost her husband of 67 years this past August and is facing the holidays this year for the first time without him. She has children that live close and give her a lot of attention, but nevertheless, this is a difficult time for her. She loves the bear and keeps it in her bedroom. She's quite busy during the daytime with her various activities, but nighttime tends to be lonely. Mr. Bear is a wonderful companion. She finds the message on the bear very comforting. Anna Marie shared that with us, and here's the note. Dear congregation, I want to thank you for the loving bear and the message that came with it. What a wonderful idea. It is appreciated, and I love the message. Sincerely, Wanda Knott. To the First Presbyterian Church family, I cannot adequately tell you how surprised, humbled, and overwhelmed I was by your cuddly teddy bear, full of love, prayers, and encouragement. I am truly grateful to Penny and Dave Swicker for suggesting that one be sent to me. Dave and Penny are good friends who sang for years in our Union Congregational Church Choir, and I enjoyed singing with them there. I appreciate all the kindness and meaning that comes with your gift, and I will treasure the bear always. Please share this note with your congregation. Thank you so very much, Ellen Parkers. All of those notes have come to us as a congregation in response to a cuddly teddy bear bearing this note and this prayer. This bear has been living and worshiping with the congregation of First Presbyterian Church of Winter Haven. It has heard the word read, the good news shared, songs of praise sung, and prayers offered. It has been hugged and loved by the First Press family. Now it comes to you bringing blessings of love, support, and encouragement. Every one of these bears, every one of the bears who are sitting with you now, bear that note. On the other side of that tag is a prayer. Wonderful God. Convey our love, support, and encouragement to the receiver of this bear. Bless them with a sense of your presence, your love, and your healing power. Give them the gift of courage, peace, and confidence as they deal with concerns of body, mind, and spirit. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Over the, pa over the past several months, these bears have become tangible expressions of Christian love for some people here, and for people far away. The bears are a reminder to us of what it means to support one another with God's love, and they are a reminder that we are connected to one another 
as Christ's body. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one, so it is with Christ. In one spirit, we were baptized into one body, Jews, Greeks, slave, free, and we were made to drink of the same spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. You see, being one body in Christ means that when we care for one another, we are actually caring for an extension of ourselves. And God's love flows through our actions as we do turn our care to others. If one part of the body suffers, all suffer together. If one member of the body is honored, all rejoice together. We are the body of Christ. Individually, we're members of the same body. It's no surprise to many of us that this love and this care that we talk about in the Christian family has somehow been embodied in a cuddly bear. I had a teddy bear when I was growing up. Now, in the staff meeting this week, when I shared that story, half of my staff did not have bears. When I shared it at the early service, I was gratified by the company in which I exist. How many of you here had a teddy bear at some point in your life? Now, my teddy bear got sidelined somewhere through my childhood and replaced by a bull named Ferdinand, a stuffed animal. Some of you also may have put your affection into a favorite doll. Well, in the early years of my life, I carried Teddy with me everywhere. I carried Teddy under my arm. So as I walked from place to place, Teddy went with me. And over time, all the fur rubbed off of Teddy. My grandmother felt concerned for Teddy, and so she took some blue denim, and she made Teddy his own custom bib overalls. Teddy and I were back together again. I love my cuddly bear. That's probably why I enjoyed reading this book of a president, a cartoonist, a toy maker, and a bear. And why I was anxious to share a few more stories with you, the results of the bears that you have given or sent to people. It seems true that teddy bears give cuddles in return. And there's nobody anywhere who could disagree, not even a president named Teddy. Friends, today we're simply together to recall a simple truth. We are God's children. And together we're called the body of Christ. Here together in the household and family of God we're reminded that if one member of the family suffers, all of us feel the hurt. And if one member of the family is honored, all of us rejoice. And if one is cuddled, all are cuddled. Friends, let's celebrate that God's love is still alive through our prayers and some cuddly bears. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If I ask you to talk about a teddy bear, a toy, a favorite doll or stuffed animal from your life, somehow you would probably express that that thing was a manifestation, a tangible way of experiencing love, care, and concern. There's a table down in front of us today that plays that same role. We often gather as Christians around the Lord's table, and it's at that place and in these elements that tangibly we experience God's grace. I invite you now to come, touch, and taste the grace of God Almighty. As you prepare yourself to come to the stations, I will remind you at this station down front, we will have a gluten-free bread and regular bread. At the station off the balcony, there will also be an opportunity for a gluten-free option. At the backs of the sanctuary at the bottom, there will still be bread and cup. So I invite you now to prepare yourselves to come to God's table. 
The Apostle Paul, who wrote to the Corinthians about the body, also said, I deliver to you what was delivered to me, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body broken for you. Take and eat. And in the same manner, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a sign of the new covenant, my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. For whenever you drink of it, remember me. Our Lord told his disciples that as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death until I come again. Let's bow before God in prayer. God, we thank you for the ways that we can touch, sense, and experience things in this world. We thank you for the love of friends that sometimes is expressed in something like a cuddly bear. And we thank you that at this table, in these elements, we sense your grace present with us and then present in us. We ask you to take these common elements of bread and juice and transform them by the power of your spirit into the body and blood of Christ. Just like you promised to take common people such as us and you pull us together and call us the body of Christ, the church. We ask you now to touch us, to fill us, and to help us to sense your love, your presence, and your grace in Christ's name. Amen. I'd like to invite our servers to come forward at this time. The gifts of God for the people of God serve God's people with joy. shed for you. Blood of Christ 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 shed for you. shed for you. Blood of Christ 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 shed for you. Thank 
shed for you. Blood of Christ 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 shed for you. shed for you, body of Christ broken for you. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, we thank you for inviting us to this table. We thank you for the bread which has symbolized your body, broken and given for us. We thank you for the juice as it has symbolized your blood shed for us. We thank you for these gifts of love and for the way they strengthen us in our spiritual life. We ask now that, sustained by this food, we may go out into the world to do your will and to always live for your honor and glory. For we make our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now stand together and sing our closing hymn, number 306, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Yeah. 
We began worship today like we begin many Sundays in worship. Somebody brought a new bear for us to tag and place in the pews, hoping that it would go out with somebody who needs it. If you need a bear, come take one. They're around you, they're in front of you. If you know somebody who needs the love and care expressed in a bear, take it to them, mail it to them. Let's continue to share symbols of God's love and grace. And as you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. She didn't start playing right away. That was real fun. We had a great time. We really did. Missed you, of course. Thanks. Um, but um, they really got into it, and uh, Claire was able to share about knowing Dia from high school and everything. So it was, it was good. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you do? I'm almost done with it, yeah. Okay. I really like it. Oh, good, yeah. good. Yeah. Something to look forward to. West Virginia. Oh, that's you right. You know, for the last two weeks, so okay. that was perfect. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Good to Take see care. you. Take care. Good morning, Alan. Hey there. Are we going to get a storm earlier than usual? Uh, probably. It feels like it's in the air, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's getting cloud, a dark cloud. <laughs> so. Hello there. Good to see you this morning. Good morning. You got some quality time. I did. Shout out. <laughs> Mary Lee. Let me tell you, Connie is one of the nicest people in the world. She comes down and stays with Joy Barranco, her mm -hmm. sister. 